Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am talking about all of the candles that I am burning or planning to burn for late spring and going into summer. I recently received a bunch of incredible candles in PR and they're juicy and zesty and light and they just really refresh a room, which is I think what we look for in warmer weather. We want something that is going to kind of lift the room up, lift our spirits up, as opposed to winter candles that are maybe a little bit cozier or more gourmand. So I'm so excited to share these with you. Some of these I have burned and some of them are brand new, so I haven't burned yet, but I am familiar with all of the candle brands that I'm going to talk about, so I can speak to their throw and their longevity and the quality of their products overall. The first candle brand I wanna mention is Otherland. And this actually is the collection that kind of gave me the idea for this video because their summer collection is called the Beach Club Collection. And I just think it's so fun and beautifully named. Otherland is a candle company who I have kept my eye on for the last couple of years since they launched. And I think their candles have just gotten better and better. They have very creative blends of scents. And I think the quality of their throw and and the way they are able to fill a room has just improved over time. So Otherland allowed me to pick out three of their six Beach Club collection candles. And when you buy three Otherland candles, you get a discount and they also come beautifully packaged like this. So this is their big box for their Beach Club collection. And you open it up and there is this really beautiful artwork. So you get this gorgeous artwork that is custom to this collection and you also get a really cute book of matches. And then the packaging comes off and you get your three candles. So let me tell you about the ones I picked out. Obviously one I've already been burning. So here's what an Otherland candle looks like. They are all in these beautiful glass vessels and they have these wooden lids with the notes printed on each lid and each candle gets its custom artwork. It's eight ounces and each candle is $36. If you purchased three candles individually, it would be $108. And I think it's three set you can get actually for 89 so you get what 20 no $19 off of your order if you order three candles which I think is a really good value there aren't a lot of candle brands that do that and if you order a six pack or all six collections in the Beach Club collection it is typically $216 and you get them for 160 so I think that's a really nice thing that Otherland does when you order directly from them this candle is called melon spell and I cannot get enough of it. It's so juicy and delicious and it fills a whole room. So the notes of this are Ruby, Watermelon, Cucumber, Dew, and Palo Santo. And you definitely get that sweet, juicy watermelon scent. And what's nice about this is it's not like an artificial watermelon, like a Jolly Rancher, like a watermelon Jolly Rancher, or like a very um, sickly kind of scent. It has a very fresh, watery, aquatic kind of quality to it, which I think watermelon does have due to its high water content. It's also balanced by the freshness of the cucumber dew. And so you get that kind of classic cucumber watermelon vibe, but it's very modern. I also think the Palo Santo elevates this scent. So rather than just being like a simple, sweet, fruity scent, it has a bit of complexity to it. I mean, it's definitely a fruity candle, don't get me wrong, but I do think the Palo Santo balances the fruity notes in this. In the last week, this is the candle that I have burned when I've gone to light a candle and I just can't get enough. I also think this candle has the best throw of any other land candle that I've tried before. We have an open concept living room, kitchen, dining room downstairs, so the entire downstairs is pretty open. So it does take quite a strong candle to fill up that entire space and we also have high ceilings. When I light this downstairs, it really doesn't take long to fill up the entire downstairs area. 
And everyone that's come through our house when this is being lit has asked what this is because it's just kind of a head turner. This is also burned more evenly than any other Otherland candle I've had. I don't really have issues with tunneling um, with Otherland candles, which is when just the middle sort of melts down and you get wax on the sides. They generally do burn evenly, but I noticed that right away, even from the first burn, that I got a very even pooling of wax, which is what you want because when you get a lot of wax around the sides of a candle, you're essentially wasting that fragrance because the wick burns out before the wax gets a chance to evaporate and release the scent. The next candle I picked out is the Otherland Nectar Pop, and this also smells so good. I actually think I'm gonna burn this tonight. So this has notes of golden mango, coconut cream, and chili salt. Tell me that doesn't make your mouth water. It's like a dessert that I wanna eat right now. This is definitely fruity, definitely a sweet scent. This is definitely a sweet scent, but none of the candles are like artificially sweet or candy sweet. It has like a real fruit quality to it. You definitely get that beautiful tropical kick of mango, but also it's very coconut forward. So it's really round and creamy and yummy and kind of velvety in its scent as well. And I think it's all balanced by that little bit of chili salt, which I think is a really cool note to add to this candle. It keeps the candle a little bit unpredictable and just a little bit more complex overall. The last Otherland candle I picked up is Cocoa Blossom. So this has notes of island coconut, gardenia petal, and warm amber. If you like a beachy scent, if you like amber, if you like woods, this is definitely like the summer version of those kinds of scents for you. This reminds me the most of being on the beach, of that scent of coconut and a little bit of sunscreen, but it also has a little bit of sexiness that I think amber lends any candle. But amber can be a little bit heavy, and I think this candle is really balanced by that gardenia petal. If this were a perfume, I would totally wear it because it does have this kind of light musk, skin-like quality to it. Not in like a true woodsy kind of musk way, but just in like this summery, beautiful, sexy kind of way, like you're on a tropical vacation. So this is Cocoa Blossom, Nectar Pop, and Melon Spell. I am also curious about the other three candles in this collection because Otherland do some experimental scents. So for example, there's a candle called Match Point, which includes the scent of tennis balls, cut grass, and cucumber. There's also Freshwater Pearl, which has the scents of sea crystal, salt water, and crushed shells and then stone fruit, which has beech plum, brown sugar, and peach skin, which I think I really, I really need that one. I love all things peachy and plummy. I love stone fruit in general. I always get excited for stone fruit season, so that's definitely one I'm thinking of picking up. But overall, this collection I think is really exciting. It's really fun and kind of playful. It evokes summer activities, summer locations, but each scent is also kind of complex and surprising and special. So this is definitely the summer collection that inspired me. The next candle is new to my collection and this brand is also new to me. So this is the Dia Sandurga Big Sur After Rain candle. I don't have anything from Dia Sandurga, so this is really my first introduction to the brand. And I received this as part of a partnership that I'm working on with Violet Gray. But this is a candle that I've had my eye on for a really long time because I'm a California girl. I've spent a lot of time in Big Sur in my childhood, in my adult life, and it's just a really special place to me. And this has notes of rainwater in eucalyptus groves off Highway 1, young green shoots, long spears, and russet underbrush. So this is not a summer candle per se in the way that Otherland Candle Collection is really obviously a summer collection. This is definitely something that I think you could burn year round because it has a very eucalyptus forward note, but it also evokes 
rain and rain on asphalt and greenery. When I opened this candle box for the first time, actually, I felt really emotional when I smelled it because it brought back all of these memories of Big Sur in a way that only scent can evoke memory. So I feel really attached to this candle already. It's not a sweet scent at all. It's very green and fresh and not even really aquatic. It does have that rain quality to it, but more in like a minerally kind of way. And to me, this is just poetry. Like this is scent poetry and I can't wait to light it. Again, I don't think it's an obvious summer scent, but because it's green and fresh, I think it has the ability to uplift the scent in a room, which is what I look for in warm weather. You don't want something really kind of cloggy and heavy to weigh down the atmosphere. You want that cleansing, uplifting quality. And I definitely think this will give me that. And this candle is on the higher end. It's seven ounces and $65. The next couple of candle brands are indie brands. They're woman owned. Full disclosure, they are owned by friends of mine who I think are just incredibly talented and have such a keen sensibility for fragrance. So the first is the New Savant, which I've spoken about before. This is Ingrid Nielsen's candle brand. It's made with love in Brooklyn. And these are two of her limited edition spring and summer scents. I do wanna say, I think these are sold out at the moment, which I'm glad because they should be, they're amazing, but she is restocking, so you should sign up for restock notifications if you're curious. The first one I've mentioned in videos before, this was her um, spring candle, and it's called Cloud Gazer. It's beautiful and comforting and creamy. It has notes of lavender sprigs, earl gray tea, misted freesia, steamed vanilla, and warm tonka. To me, this is a very relaxing scent. It's almost like a wind down kind of scent that you wanna light at the end of the day. If you're taking a bath, maybe you're reading a book, you're getting cozy in bed. That's the kind of mood that this candle evokes for me. This summer candle is so good. I mean, they're both good, but to me, this candle is really unique. So it's called Summer Splendor. It has notes of charred artichoke, Italian white wine, salty green olives, and roasted sesame seeds. I mean, can you even imagine what that smells like? To me, when I read this description, I really couldn't imagine what it smelled like. They describe the smell as savory, lush, and effortless. It, the feeling it evokes is friends dining al fresco, chilled white wine, nibbles of Castle Vetrano olives and grilled artichoke, windows wide open, the smell of toasted sesame, wafting from the kitchen, long summer days, laughter and conversation. Tell me that isn't a, the most beautiful little summer poem. It's so good. So here's what I smell. It's definitely green. It has these acidic notes from the white wine and the olives, but it's also balanced by this really big, bold, beautiful, like green scent, this kind of green vegetal scent. It's a really hard candle to describe because it's such a unique scent, but I have a hard time imagining people won't love this. I actually first smelled artichoke in a candle in another limited edition candle, actually. Diptyque earlier this spring had released an artichoke candle and I loved it. It was green and fresh and beautiful and I was really sad it was limited edition, but then I saw Ingrid's candle, which is again, limited edition, but I was so happy to see that note here. And I think Ingrid did it better. I may be biased here, but I think there's just such a complexity to this candle that I was so happy to see that her summer candle went in this really unexpected, beautiful, surprising, full, robust direction. And I really hope for my sake that Ingrid does bring it back, not just for summer, but in general, because I think it's such a special scent. I think there's something very natural about Ingrid's scent blends. Natural as in like they make sense. They have a very organic feel to them. So you don't notice right away like, ooh, this scent is gonna hit you in the face. It's kind of a fragrance that grows into the room and then suddenly you notice it and you realize it's there and you pick up on all of the complexity of the sense. And it's always a little bit of an unexpected surprise. And I just love that about Ingrid's candles. 
The new Savant candles come in these beautiful aluminum vessels and they have aluminum lids and they are seven ounces for $38. The next candle collection is the Getaway Collection from Palm Trees and 80 Degrees, which is my dear friend Danielle's candle brand. This is another indie small candle business. It's woman owned, it's black owned, and they are poured in South Florida, which is where Danielle lives. The Getaway Collection focuses on different summer vacation locations. So each candle is named for a specific location. The first one is called Spanish Sangria. And if there's something that Danielle knows, it's citrus notes. This woman creates the most beautiful, juicy, explosive, lush, gorgeous, full-bodied citrus note candles. She has a few in her permanent collection and she also nailed it here. The top notes are bergamot, champagne, with middle notes of orange peel and neroli, and base notes of vanilla, powder, and ginger. It definitely has that luscious, fruity quality to it, but it's also balanced by these deeper notes of ginger and a little bit of roundness from vanilla. If you like citrus notes, you will love this. The next candle is called Coast of Saint-Tropez. This has top notes of pear and freshly cut melon, middle notes of jasmine, nectarine, and apricot, and a base note of vanilla flower and vetiver. This definitely is fruit forward, but I would say it's a little bit more rounded than, for example, Spanish sangria, which feels mostly fruity all the way through. Because this has base notes of vetiver and that middle note of jasmine, there's a little bit more floral, a little bit more depth that kind of balances out the fruity notes, but it's definitely still primarily a fruity candle. The last candle is called Tokyo Blossoms, and this is definitely, I think, a departure for Danielle. I'm really excited to see this because it's very much a floral scent. So it has top notes of magnolia, cherry blossom, and ozone, middle notes of cherry and rose, and a base of sandalwood and tonka bean you do very much get that hit of fresh, kind of powdery white florals first. And then you get a little bit of depth from that sandalwood. I feel like that balances out the powderiness of the florals and kind of grounds the scent overall. And Danielle's candles have some serious throw. They will fill a room and they will fill a room really quickly. And they're just bold and juicy and undeniable. They're also huge. These are 12 ounce candles in black glass vessels and they are $28 each. To close it out, I couldn't do a candle video and not mention Nest. I have loved Nest candles for like 10 plus years. I'm a long time fan of the brand, but I actually have a newer release from them that I love and it is their wild mint and eucalyptus candle. I think I've mentioned it on the channel before. This came out last year and they have this new line that's called their wellness line. So these are scents that are more about relaxation, about taking a moment, about sort of self-care. And wild mint and eucalyptus, it might not be the most obvious summer candle, but to me, it's so uplifting and refreshing and clean smelling that that's the kind of thing I do look for in warmer months. This candle has notes of wild mint, eucalyptus, basil, and Thai ginger. And I just love how fresh and green it is. It's a very light scent, so it's not going to be something that's going to be like super in your face. The wellness candles in general are meant to be kind of a calming, soft presence. I love this both as a candle and a diffuser. For me, if I am going to have a diffuser out, it has to be a little bit soft because I don't want something too intense in my face all the time. So I actually have this diffuser in our bath right or our bath area right now. So that's where the shower and the bath is and it just feels very refreshing and clean and it's not too strong. It's just right for a kind of spa-like environment. But I've also lit this in my bedroom, in my office. It's just very calming and personally, I really like the scent of mint. I love eucalyptus. You've seen that note in a few different candles and it has that little bit of basil greenery, not in a truly like savory kind of way, 
but in a way that adds a little bit of depth to the scent overall. And then my two favorite fruity candles from Nest are Sicilian Tangerine and Grapefruit. And I wait all year long to light these. I mean, to be honest, I would light these at any time of year because I love citrus scents, but they especially feel perfectly seasonal when the warm weather rolls around. Grapefruit is, I think, one of Nest's best sellers. It has notes of pink pomelo grapefruit and watery green nuances, which are blended with lily of the valley and coriander blossom. So it is refreshing and juicy, but it also has a little bit of aquaticness, a little bit of slightly floral notes that prevent this candle from being too much of a sharp citrus, like a sharp, hard-hitting citrus, it has a bit of a rounded quality to it. Sicilian Tangerine has notes of Sicilian Tangerine and Bergamot entwined with exotic mango and passion fruit. So this is definitely a little bit more fruity. It has kind of a tropical note. It even has a little bit of creaminess, not in a truly like milky creamy way, but I think it must be the mango and passion fruit that evoke that kind of tropical creaminess, if you know what I mean. So even though these are both citrus scents, they're actually quite different on different ends of the citrus spectrum. So grapefruit is a little bit more aquatic, a little bit more floral and fresh, whereas Sicilian tangerine is more full-bodied and fruity. Nest candles come in a beautiful glass vessel and they are eight ounces for 40, six dollars i think they raised the price by a couple of dollars um in the new year so i love these i think they burn really really well the thing that you do want to be sure you're doing with all candles but i think especially with nest candles is make sure that you're trimming the wicks because if you don't that's when you get that ashy burn and because these are a clear semi-frosted glass you can really see if you haven't trimmed your wick and you're not getting a clean burn. And to be honest, that's something you wanna do with all of your candles to prevent an ashy burn or releasing any kind of ash into the air and also to prevent any potential fire danger because you don't want the flame to be so big that it jumps out or catches fire on something else. You wanna make sure that it's an appropriately sized flame to be contained within the vessel. And of course, as always, don't leave your candles burning unattended. Be careful with kids and pets. Um, I always feel like I have to say that because candle fires do happen. I'll be linking all of these candles below as well as the wick trimmers that I do use. I actually have a couple around the house wherever I like to burn candles, upstairs and downstairs, just because you can use scissors, but once you get down into a candle, it doesn't really make sense. So it is kind of a practical tool to have. So that's everything from me. I would love to hear what you're burning this summer, if there are any candles that are catching your eye. I always get really great recommendations from you guys for new candle brands to check out. So please let me know if you think there's anything that I would like. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.